Representatives, and we have uh, welcome back uh, MP McLean. For Thank five you very minutes. much, uh, Mr. Chair. It's good to see everybody here again, and uh, it's a committee I miss. So uh, I am going to get right into the question here. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody in person. Welcome, everybody on screen. Uh, I have the honor today of asking questions of the Business Council of Alberta, Mr. Michael Holden. Mr. Holden, uh, I heard your comments. Uh, thank you for uh, what I think are very informative and future thinking uh, alternatives on where we have to move going forward here. You talked in your comments about the investment tax credit for CCUS. Would it surprise you if I told you that we're dealing with Bill C-19, the Budget Implementation Act, and there actually is no provision in this act for the investment tax credit? Uh, thank you for the question. I confess that I was not aware of that. Um, my in, in the time that we had to prepare our comments, we focused on the issues that we were paying most attention to in the budget itself rather than what was contained in Bill C-19 specifically. It surprised me too, I should confess, when I first had to look at the bill because it does seem like there is a climate emergency out there and the government keeps shouting that at the walls, and yet they w haven't moved forward on a carbon tax credit in over a year since I first put it on the on the docket as a bill in Parliament, and uh, now it's in the budget after more than a year of consultation, and it's not in the Budget Implementation Act, so we're still waiting. I know industry is still waiting to see what that looks like before they commit to actually moving forward with many projects. And you're in Alberta, you know how many projects are sitting there waiting for what happens here as we go forward. Would it also surprise you that Canada Growth Fund that you referred to is not part of the Budget Im Implementation Act? My understanding with those, uh, thank you for the question, was that, that, um, that each of those cases required additional consultation um, with industry in order to help shape the design um, of those programs. So to answer your question, I did not know that it was not in there, but it, it does not overly surprise me for the simple reason that these were um, programs that needed to be the consult consultations with industry needed to happen before that design was um, would um, before a specific program would be implemented. Thank you. Uh, how do you foresee the can the Canada Growth Fund being different from the unspent money in the Canada Infrastructure Bank? That's a question that I. I would have to get back to you on that I don't specifically have an answer to. I think that from our perspective, um, what we were looking for in this budget was, you know, being from Alberta, we're the source of our uh, largest source of Canada's uh, emissions, um, a large contributor to the economy because of our energy sector, that we needed to see action from the federal government in order to help leverage the private sector investment that was needed to actually meet these emissions targets that the federal government has set. And so, um, putting this kind of action on the table, I think is an important step in the right direction. It may not be the only step that is needed, but uh, but we do need the investment tax credit. We do need all hands on deck. And most importantly, we need governments and the and industry working together. Um, and that's the only way we're going to address these issues. Thank you. One of the other witnesses talked about the, uh, the waiting a year before we actually implement uh, some of the approvals we're talking about here. And you mentioned the massive approval process of getting regu re regulations through and getting projects built, which is exactly the hurdles that uh, businesses in Alberta, I think across the country, are facing as the regulatory process is onerous and effectively uh, has a lack of foresight on how it actually, what, what the outcome will be. Um, have you had any consultation with the government about reforming this process, much as Germany has done in the face of the onslaught from Russia into Ukraine? Uh, they have lessened their regulatory process by 90% to get gasification facilities built in Germany. Is that something you'd like to see similarly in Canada? Thank you. Um, I do believe that we need to work as quickly as possible on this, and the regulatory reforms and uh, speeding up these approval processes are critical to meeting this, uh, meeting the ERP targets, which are only seven and a half years away. To answer your question, we have spoken to Ministers Gibo and Wilkinson, as well as uh, members of the PCO at, at the bureaucratic level in the Prime Minister's office about this. So we have expressed those concerns, and and we feel like we have been heard. It is a it's a question of whether or not. Uh, the government would be able to deploy its resources towards addressing 
reforms of these systems in the same way that climate change itself is being viewed, viewed as an emergency because it would be very difficult for Canada to meet its 2030 targets, which are seven and a half years away if it takes five to six years to approve a project to even start putting a dent in it. Right. And thank you for speaking up so loudly for the, the benefits that LNG from Canada would provide to the world's environmental footprint. I really appreciate that. I'm going to turn to Evelyn. That, that's the time. That's the McLean. Time. Yeah, it goes fast. And, and we do thank our witnesses. We know that we asked you to, to appear in, with very short order. And, uh, and we do thank you for that.